the setup the refrigeration test bed uh, we have studied in the class the concepts of vapor compression refrigeration system and this setup uh, is a attempt to internalize the concepts which you are learning in the class we know that vapor compression refrigeration system is a very interesting kind of system found in all practical refrigeration plants so what we will be doing first is we will be locating the major components the core components of the vapor compression refrigeration system what are they we know that it's a vapor compression refrigeration system and the heart of the refrigeration system is a compressor so can you see the compressor over here uh, look at this this black small setup which you see over here this is a compressor this is a kirloskar made hermetically sealed compressor which is found in small setups okay so this is a compressor and you know that this compressor is going to uh, compress the refrigerant from the suction pressure that is the evaporator pressure up to the discharge pressure which is the condenser pressure so where is the condenser so you see that uh, the condenser this is a system which is a low capacity system and the condenser would be a air cool condenser it don't be a water cool condenser as in the larger setup so where is the air cool condenser so look at this setup you see over here that this is a condenser there are some coils and you see some fan fan is to increase the heat transfer coefficient uh, you know that primarily the heat transfer would be from convection and by using a fan we can enhance the heat transfer so condenser what does it do condenser you know that the refrigerant would flow from the compressor to the condenser and the condenser would reject the heat to the surround uh, after the condenser the refrigerant would move into the expansion device So look at this, this coil kind of thing, the copper coil kind of thing. This is an expansion device. This is a capillary tube which is found in the domestic refrigerators. So this expansion device would help us to reduce the pressure from the discharge pressure, that is the condenser pressure, up to the suction pressure, which is the evaporator pressure. So this is the expansion device. And then where does it go? Where does the refrigerant go? The refrigerant would go from this. expansion device into the evaporator coil look at this this box which you see over here this is the evaporator chamber and in this evaporator chamber there is water in it the water will be cooled uh, by the aid of the coils look at this you see that there are some coils over here these are the copper coils and this copper coils are the coils where the refrigerant is circulated and the refrigerant would extract the heat from the water and produce the refrigerating effect so the refrigerant coil in this case is housed in this container and this container what actually happens in this container is that you reduce the temperature of the water now by what temperature what what temperature the water uh, by what degrees the water temperature reduces that would be crucial to find so in order to find experimentally the refrigerating effect what we do is that we note down the temperature initial temperature of the water we note down the final temperature of the water and we know that there is a known mass of water in this container by knowing the known mass of water in this container by knowing the specific heat of water which is 4.187 and by knowing the temperatures before uh, starting the refrigeration and after starting the refrigeration that upon the time of conducting the experiment that is m cp delta t of water upon time of conduction of experiment will help us to determine the capacity of the system that is the refrigerating effect of the system experimentally so in this experiment we can find the the refrigerating effect by actually measuring the temperature of the water initial temperature final temperature we must know the mass of the water and we must know the time required for cooling this water okay so that gives us the refrigerating effect experimentally how do we find the compressor work experimentally because you know that uh, performance means the coefficient of performance is the ratio of refrigerating effect to the compressor work so how do you find the compressor work or power consumed by the compressor experimentally so look at this there is an energy meter over here this energy meter of the compressor readings we can take we can note down the initial meter reading you will find such meters at your homes also so we can take down the initial readings of this meter then you can take down the final reading of the meter the divide the two take the difference of the two and divide it by time so that meter readings upon time would give you the kilowatt of the compressor you know that one unit of electricity is 1 kilowatt hour so 1 kilowatt hour 
is the unit of electricity. So you can read this, the least part of this 1 by 10 kilowatt hours. So accordingly one can read the meter and one can find out how much kilowatt hour is consumed by this compressor in a given time. That upon the time of the conduction of the test, that KWH upon time in hours, that hours will cancel and what you get is the kilowatt reading of the compressor. So this is how experimentally one can find the compressor power consumed. Okay. So well, first thing is you can find the refrigerating effect experimentally by noting down the temperatures of the water MCP delta T upon time and one can find the power consumed by the compressor by noting down the readings of the meter which is installed in the setup. Okay. So this is how one finds what is called as the experimental COP. We can also find the COP theoretically as we have studied in the class by plotting this cycle on the pressure enthalpy diagram. So for that you know that we need to note down the suction pressure and the discharge pressure. So suction pressure, look at this. This is the suction pressure. Suction pressure means the evaporator pressure. Look at this kg per centimeter square. So you will find that you can read the kg per centimeter square which is approximately bars and you can find the discharge pressure which is again kg per centimeter square again in bars you can convert it into these are the gauge pressures you need to convert it into absolute pressures by adding atmospheric pressure so the, this reading the reading of the suction pressure plus 1.013 bar is equal to the evaporator pressure this reading the discharge pressure reading shown by this pressure gauge plus 1.013 bar that would give us the discharge pressure. So we can note down the suction pressure, we can note down the discharge pressure, plot it on the pressure enthalpy diagram, assume it to be a saturation cycle, read the values of enthalpies H1, H2, H3, H4 and this is how we can find the specific compressor work which is the enthalpy difference across the compressor and specific refrigerating effect which is the enthalpy difference across the refrigerator. So getting that enthalpies will help you determine the theoretical coefficient of performance of this system. Okay. Now note down that we have simply taken the suction pressure and discharge pressure, we have not taken down the temperatures. So why did we do that? Because we had assumed it to be a saturation cycle. But that is not the case. In real life it is not a saturation cycle. It would be some that the vapor which is entering the compressor is slightly superheated and it is possible that the, the liquid which is being entering the expansion device, this is subcooled. So how do we know that? So we need to note down the temperatures. Now look at this. This is the gauge, this is the indicator, okay, which is connected to the thermocouples and you can see that it notes down the temperatures. You could, so you can get the actual temperatures after evaporation right that is before the suction of the compressor after compression that is before the suction uh, before the condenser after condensation that is before the expansion device and after expansion that is entry to the evaporator okay so we can note down the salient temperatures p1 p2 p3 p4 by rotating this okay and you can note uh, you can rotate this and note down the actual temperatures if we know the actual temperatures, if we know the pressure, we can plot the actual cycle on a pressure enthalpy diagram. Okay, the refrigerant which is used over here is R134A which is tetrafluoroethane. So, we need to use the pressure enthalpy diagram of tetrafluoroethane. Don't use it for R12 or for R11. Okay, because the refrigerant being circulated in the setup is R134A. We need to use the pressure enthalpy diagram of R134A. If we are doing the calculations using the tables, the refrigeration tables, we need to refer to the refrigeration tables of R134A. So I guess that this setup is understood. What is the aim of this? Let me just summarize what I have told. This, the aim of this is to demonstrate the principles of vapor compression refrigeration system. Okay, now how do we demonstrate it? By actually measuring the suction pressure, the discharge pressure and the temperatures. We also determine the experimental COP by finding the refrigerating effect using actual temperature measurements and by using the actual power consumed using the meter. Okay, so this is a very fun experiment and when you come over here physically, you will really enjoy the experiment. Our uh, technical expert, VW Zadosar will assist in 
conducting this experiment and hopefully we would be in a position to condemn this. Thank you very much. Bye for now.